Hi there, and let's get to it. I'd like to talk a bit about how we can influence the viewer and interface of DaVinci Resolve for better visibility. We'll be looking at dual screens and viewer size shortcuts, but before that, let's check out the video scopes. We'll be having dedicated videos for these scopes later on, but in the meantime, I just want to show you how you can dock these out of the interface to put on a separate monitor or just to have as a floating window on your interface to better see the visual data. So the video scopes can be accessed in the workspace menu and you just have to select on or click Control shift w So I can now grab these, expand their size to see them in finer detail, and move them onto my second monitor to take full advantage of them. Additionally, in the workspace menu, I can choose to go into a dual screen layout, which will scatter my palettes across two windows, give me a much larger viewer and a better representation of the video scopes. I can control which monitor will appear where with the primary display option of the layout menu. So right now I'm looking at display 1, but I could indicate for this monitor to be display 2 instead. I'm going to go back into my layout menu and I'm going to reset my UI layout. And I'm going to turn dual screen off. Now for the viewer window itself, uh, we have the same controls at the top the ability to change what size we're looking back at the footage. Next to that we have a reader telling us whether the footage is playing back in real time or not. The name of the timeline that we're currently on and the ability to switch between timelines. And the time code next to that. Underneath the video we have our usual playhead controls, forward, backwards, stop, and jump to either end. We have our loop function. And next to that, we have the on-screen control menu. Now, the majority of these will become active automatically when we open up their respective palettes at the bottom of the software. Next to that, we have the mix, unmix button. What this does is it disables any transitions, effects, or composites that you've applied to your clips inside of the edit page. Uh, this can be really helpful because it will make your grading process cleaner and it will also be less processor intensive. Next to that, we have the mute function, which is a good idea to leave on because most of the time we don't care about real-time playback when we're grading and compositing. To zoom in on an area of the image, you can use the scroll wheel of your mouse. Click the center button and drag to change the position. If you're unable to use this setting, it might be because you don't have it enabled inside of the view menu. Go to zoom and ensure allow mouse zoom is ticked. In terms of keyboard shortcuts, you can use control plus and minus to zoom in. And to reset the screen, you can click fit in the top left corner or shift Z. If you want to see your footage at actual size, the shortcut is alt shift Z. Or you can use the menu view and viewer actual size. There's also ways of expanding the viewer to fill up more of your screen. Now one obvious way is to collapse your timeline and your clips, perhaps your nodes and gallery, thereby expanding the dynamic screen. But a faster way to do this would be to use one of the viewer modes inside of the workspace menu. So we have three options and they all contain the letter F. That's the easiest way to remember it as full screen. With Control F, we get an output that fills the entire monitor. Clicking Control F again undoes the expansion and brings the viewer back into the color page. Shift F, it's very similar, but it does still give us the playhead controls at the bottom. And lastly, we have Alt F, which hides the panels around the viewer, leaving all the color palettes intact for you to continue grading your project. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching.